Welcome to Casual Connect 2013, day three, morning presentation, achievement unlocked. You've managed to get up for the first presentation in the morning. My name is Nick, and I'm going to be the MC today, and I'm going to be uh, introducing all the speakers. You don't really want to hear me speak, uh, so I'm going to keep all the introductions very short. It's my pleasure to introduce Michael, Michael Kalkowski from Game Duo. Um, it's a pleasure for a couple of reasons. One, he's a very nice guy. Uh, two, he has an awful lot of data. And three, he's been in the industry a long time. I think his company was founded in 2003. That's right. And if you like what he says, he has lots of open positions. He has looking for up to 30 developers in his studio in Berlin. So, Michael, the stage is yours. All right. Thank you, Nick. Let me take you on a little journey through the history of our industry. And we will look at this in particular from a platform perspective. So. I want to show what important role the different and new gaming platforms and devices have played for the growth of our industry. If we look at the revenues of casual games in the last 40 years, we can see that they have grown quite significantly, especially in the last 10 years, to currently about $25 billion. That's worldwide casual game revenues. And interestingly, if we look closer where exactly those revenues are generated, on what platforms, we can identify five major platforms. The first one was in the late 70s and, and early 80s, arcade machines. That was a big hype. It was the golden age of casual games and people played on machines like this. A lot of the successful game design principles and genres were already invented during that golden era. But there were also limitations because you had to walk to, to play the games. You had to walk to the arcade hall and you could only play during opening hours. So with the next platform, they changed that limitation. That was the rise of home gaming devices like uh, casual consoles and also gaming on home PCs. Like here, this is a photo from the 1980s and the guy on the right, that ex that's actually myself playing a multiplayer game, uh, I think it was Bruce Lee on the Commodore 64. So with, the, with this new platform, people could play um, 24 hours. And the next platform then was the internet. When the internet in the late 90s um, became a gaming uh, device or gaming platform itself, it was even more easy to, to play games. You, could, you didn't have to go to the store to buy your games, but you could just download them or play instantly in the browser. So as we will see, every new platform has broadened the accessibility and the, the convenience to play games. The fourth platform then was social networks, which uh, started in the year 2007 to, became the, uh, to become gaming platforms. And with that, people could play much easier with their friends and also the demographics changed. So it broadened while previously more young people were playing casual games. Now also older people started playing and people that didn't even consider themselves gamers started playing. And the fifth platform, of course, that's mobile, which also started uh, around the year 2007. And with mobile, you can play now anywhere and, and anytime because you have your arcade machine always, always with you. The year 2007 is very crucial for our industry because that's uh, where both Apple introduced the first iPhone and also where Facebook launched the, the Facebook platform. And we're going to look a little bit more in detail about uh, at these two gaming platforms. We start with social networks. So Facebook itself was founded in 2004, of course. But, and here's a photo from uh, Mark in his Harvard dorm room from the early days. Um, but Facebook didn't become relevant as a game platform until the year 2007 when they opened up for third-party developers and a lot of gaming uh, companies jumped on that opportunity and also a lot of new companies were founded um, in the month following that. Zynga was founded two months after that. Uh, Playfish was founded five months after that. Um, but it took a while before the first real games appeared on the platform. So 2008, we still had a lot of apps like that, virtual gifting, uh, viral apps game-like apps, but um, it took until 2009 until we saw the, the first real games emerge on, on the platform. 
And here's a breakdown of the genres from that time. And we can see that 70% of all the games of the early days were simulation games, pet games, for example. But the first big hype on the platform was farm games. Uh, a lot of companies back then developed farm games. Farm Town was a big one. Um, and of course, Farmville was released in, in June 2009 and became the biggest Facebook game ever in terms of users, uh, still to this day. Here you can see the, the DAU numbers from Farmwell, and it peaked at over 30 million DAU in 2010. There were also a couple of acquisitions already in 2009, like um, EA bought Playfish, who also had a farm game back then for uh, 300 million. And it continued in 2010, Disney bought Playdom. And uh, the genre mix didn't change that much. In 2010, it was still, the majority of the games were simulation games, but there was a new subgenre emerging uh, in 2010, a new hype, which was city building games. A lot of companies created those city games, uh, in particular, the most successful one that was uh, City Will, which was released in late 2010. And here you can see the daily active user numbers from Farmville and Cityville. Cityville became the number one Facebook game uh, in 2010, but it never really got to the level of Farmville, as um, never any other game actually got to that level of Farmville. Here you can see the, the DU numbers of the top Facebook games over time, and not even the latest one at the very right, Candy Crush Saga, has been reaching those levels. Then came the year 2011, and um, a lot of interesting changes happened. There was a third hype, which was casino games. If you look at the genre breakdown, we can see that in 2011, casino games grew to 13%. And if you factor in monetization, that was even a more important genre. So we had games like Slotomania from Playtica and the company uh, was then acquired afterwards by Caesars from Las Vegas. We saw more acquisitions, EA bought PopCap, for over a billion. And then, of course, the year ended with the Big Bang Zynga's IPO at, uh, in Dece December 2011. The, the market started to continue to heat up. 2012, we saw more acquisitions. IGT bought Double Down for 500 million. And then there was a new hype, a new genre coming up, and that was Word and Trivia games. Here's the genre breakdown. You can see that in 2011, 11% of the top um, 100 Facebook games DAU were in Word and Trivia. Games like uh, Words with Friends, for example, that became quite popular. And um, interesting about that genre is that they leveraged, for the first time, cross-platform technology, which was one of the reasons why that genre became so popular. So you could play that game on the Facebook cameras, you could play it on the, on the mobile phone, and you could play it on, on tablets. And it was all synchronized in terms of game modes and, and all the in-game um, features. And we will see that uh, cross-platform has since then been a major growth driver for the, top, for the top games. Now, this year has been more difficult for many Facebook and social game developers, in particular for Zynga, who had to lay off a significant uh, part of their employees. And we can also see why, because the revenues, this is the quarterly revenues from Zynga, they have dropped 30% year over year. But not all companies have been struggling. There have also been uh, some, some good success stories. So social gaming is not over. There have been examples like King, who have um, overtaken King, uh, have, have overtaken Zynga uh, earlier this year and become the number one uh, developer on Facebook. And the question is, how was that possible? What was behind the reason behind that success story? Well, one reason was uh, emergence of a new genre, which, which is the fifth hype on the social platform, and that is arcade games. If you look at the genre breakdown today, then we can see that 40% of the users of the top 100 Facebook games are playing arcade games. That's pretty impressive. And in particular, two subgenres there are, are very popular. The first one was bubble shooter games, uh, like Bubble Witch Saga. 
and that actually started earlier already. It's, um, in 2009, we had the first big bubble shooter, Bubbles IQ, and then there was Bubble Island, and then King launched uh, their two bubble shooters, Bubble Saga and Bubble Witch Saga, which created a huge hype in the industry. A lot of companies created their own bubble shooter games, including Zynga, and you can see here uh, in 2012, the whole bubble shooter genre went up to over 16 million daily active users. It has now been declining uh, again, but not because people don't like to play arcade games anymore. It's more because another arcade genre has emerged that is even more popular, and that is Match 3 games. And we all know that game. Uh, the first Match 3 game was actually, or the first big one, was Bejeweled Blitz, which uh, was launched in 2008. And I put the bubble shooter DAU uh, in the background, the, the white area. That's the, all the, the bubble shooters combined. Um, to put it in perspective. So if we add Candy Crush now, then we can see that Candy Crush and Bedrew Blitz together already have more DAU than all the bubble shooters. And of course, with this big success of Candy Crush, there were a lot of companies jumping on it as well and doing their own match free games. So here you can see that the, currently there is over 25 million daily active users in match free games. So in the next couple of months, we, saw, we will likely see a lot more in that genre to, to come up. Well, why was that, or why is that so popular? There are several reasons. Um, first of all, arcade games are ideally suited to leverage the so social graph. So you can really play in a very competitive way with your friends. You can see your friends on, on the level map, and that really is a very engaging feature. And um, more importantly, the, the new arcade games are using very smart level-based progression. So you have all these different levels that get more and more difficult over time, and that is a, a principle that we've seen uh, already in other super successful games working very well, like Angry Birds. Uh, they have exactly the same mechanic, and that's why users play these games over and over again. Should we all now build more arcade games? Well, if you look at the number of users, it's certainly the biggest genre, but um, if you factor in monetization and ARPUs, then the genre split looks a bit different. So here's uh, the genre split factoring in monetization, and we can see that by far now the biggest genre is RPG and midcore games, which is about 40%. That's where all the money is, that's where all the developers currently are developing games for. And interestingly, it looks pretty similar in mobile. So here on the left you have the genre split breakdown for Facebook and on the right for mobile and also there on mobile um, RPG midcore games in terms of top grossing is 43% of, of the top games. Which brings us to the mobile platform. Also the mobile era was uh, really started as a games, um, gaming platform in 2007 when Apple launched uh, the first iPhone. But it took a bit longer for mobile to become uh, a, a big gaming platform because every platform needs some breakthrough game, some, some hit game that really makes the platform mass market. And uh, for, for Facebook, that was Farmville. And for mobile, that was Angry Birds, which was released in late 2009. And with Angry Birds, then everybody started to play on mobile devices. Um, a lot of other companies then soon joined the party, like uh, Google with, with the Nexus One at the beginning of 2010. And then Apple launched uh, the, the, um, the iPad, which created a whole new sub-platform um, that some people treat as, as, as their own platform in itself. Um, a lot of companies were founded, focusing and especially on mobile, like Supercell, who were founded in June 2010. And then also Amazon joined the party in 2011, quite late actually, because in 2011 was when mobile had, uh, for the first time, overtook social in terms of users. So here you can see the, the orange line, that's the monthly active users, and that's gamers only playing on mobile devices, and the blue line, that is um, users playing on social networks, and you can see that in September 2011, mobile for the first time overtook social. And not only in terms of users, but also in terms of revenue, mobile is now the biggest platform for casual games. And while social is kind of flattening out a little bit, mobile is still growing extremely uh, strong. It has also led to 
an explosion really in, in terms of game content. So if you look at the number of games available on the different platforms historically, in the arcade halls, you maybe had 10 games to choose from. There were not too many games. Um, on your home gaming devices, you had a broader selection, maybe 100 titles to play. Then with the rise of the internet, on the web portals like Yahoo Games or MSN Zone, you had several hundred, maybe a thousand games. But with Facebook now, it's, it's over 10,000, which still is small compared to, to mobile, where we have currently 900,000 apps in total, and of those, over 350,000 are game apps, which creates, of course, a big challenge for users in terms of discovery, finding uh, the games, and it creates also a big challenge for us game developers in terms of competition, because it's highly concentrated at the top. It's, it's a bit like in, in the movie business in Hollywood where the, the top actors get all the, the cool movies and all the money. And um, the same way here, the concentration chart, you can see that 10%, that the top 10 apps get 90% of all the downloads. And it's even more extreme at the, at the very top where 0.1% of all the apps generate 50% of all the downloads and also the money. That's why there is now uh, some companies in the mobile space that make tons of money, like Supercell with, with their two games, Heyday and Clash of Clans, they both generate now over a million dollars in revenue per day each. And there's another game, uh, Puzzle and Dragons, which even makes almost four million dollars per day in revenue. Um, created a, a real dragon hype in mobile, so if you look at the top grossing mobile games, there's uh, the top 100, I think there's now seven games with the word dragon in the title. It's, uh, it's all about dragon games, so that's the next hype. No, I think the next big opportunity is going to be the next platform. And that's the question, what's going to be the next big gaming platform? Will it be devices like Google Glass, which will enable totally new game experiences? Like uh, you can imagine playing Angry Birds or Candy Crush in a, in a three-dimensional virtual world. Um, well, that will take a bit longer, I think, because the prices, consumer prices are still quite high and um, it will take a while until it becomes really a mass market gaming phenomenon. But there are already some platforms emerging. Um, mobile messaging services, for example, which are very popular in Asia. Um, Line, as an example, they, they have this uh, text and chat application and they're starting now to integrate game centers into their apps and game um, listings, like here, where in Asia, a lot of the, the top mobile games are getting the distribution from these mobile messaging apps. And there's already a couple of companies in that space, like WhatsApp, KakaoTalk, WeChat, Line, who have grown crazy over the, na over the last month. And each of them have now more than 100 million users. Will that be the next big platform? I don't know. but. I will say three things. Um, first of all, the, the next big platform will be emerging within the next two years because platform change is accelerating. We see more new platforms coming faster. Secondly, we will, we will see, or as we have seen historically, new platforms have added revenues um, and not so much cannibalized the existing revenues. So with the next big platform, our industries uh, revenues in total will likely grow very nicely, and that's, that's great. And thirdly, um, the big players in the space are usually quite slow to go to the new platform. So with the next big platform, we will likely see um, a new company, a small company emerging and become the next multi-million dollar gaming company. So I think it's one of the most exciting times to be in, uh, and the future looks very good for our industry. So let's, let's work on that. Like, Let's work on the next platform. Thank you. Well, thank you Michael. We have some, time. some questions. If anybody has any questions, please raise your hand and I'll bring the mic over to you. Well, if there's no questions, I'm going to sort of start by asking a question. Yeah. Um, you talked about the, the last couple of, you used the word hypes, but uh, mm -hmm. mobile mm -hmm. and social. Could you comment on the merging together of those things about games that are played cross-platform that you can start on one and then finish off on the other or backwards and forwards? Yeah, um, so this started really with the word and trivia genre, but now all the, a lot of the big um, games that we see both on Facebook and on mobile are leveraging 
uh, cross-platform technology. So, um, which, which makes sense because people, um, we, we've seen yesterday there was a panel about um, Candy Crush and the users were talking how they play first during, during the work day, they play at the office at their computer and then when they go home they continue playing on the mobile phone. So we've seen games that leverage uh, cross-platform technology have a much, e are much easier to grow and have a much broader user base. And then even games that are mobile only, they like uh, Heyday and Clash of Clans, they leverage Facebook Connect, at least, as a cross-platform technology. Any more questions? Oh. Go ahead. How's it going? Um, on one of your slides, you presented that 10% makes 90% of the revenue. Mm -hmm. Do you foresee um, a time in which there, it's a little bit more egalitarian and the wealth is spread across um, you know, indie de developers to big developers? Well, it's hard to say. I think it's, um, that depends really on the app stores, how they, how they help to bring up new games and new content. Um, at the moment, um, it's, I can show it and bring up the slide again here. Um, this is a slide. So it's, it's highly concentrated because of the way the app stores are designed. There's not much shelf space to, to show uh, games, but maybe we will see, um, and we already see some, some um, platforms that help game discovery, like not uh, the app stores themselves, but websites which are more focused on certain genres that help uh, specific users find games for them. And then that could change a little bit the concentration. Any more questions? Well, one last question for me then. Um, how do you classify tablets? Do you think tablets are mobile devices or are they a category in their own right? Um, I, would, I would say tablets are more a uh, platform of, of their own because of the way they are used um, and, and the context when they're used. We see a lot of our users who, who use their tablets at home actually um, while they sit in the living room in the evening, they watch television, but they have the tablet with them and they play um, on, or they, they, they're using several screens at the same time. With the mobile phone, it's more you're going out um, or um, waiting somewhere in, in, in the subway. But I also heard um, mobile phones used a lot on the toilet. So people play um, mobile phone on, on games on the toilet. But the tablet is more in the living room and, and, and uh, in the bedroom. So it's different use cases and uh, different audience. So I think it's, it makes sense to treat it as, as their own platform and develop games specifically for those platforms. All right. Have one more question? If not, well, thank you very much, Michael. That was awesome. Okay. Thank you.